You might have heard of them, but what is a Creative Commons license? Creative Commons licenses were developed in 2002, partly as a response to the rapid rise in new ways of sharing information. Copyright legislation was originally created at a time when the main way to share information was through print items such as books and journals, which required formal publication. The internet made sharing creative outputs as easy as clicking a button, and this created something of a conflict with copyright. Once material has been made available online, it can sometimes be almost impossible to trace the original creator and know what they will allow others to do with their work. This led to a situation where people wanting to use materials were faced with the choice of either potentially breaching copyright or not using the materials at all. Creative Commons licenses were designed to ease these tensions and complement copyright rather than replace it. They're customizable open licenses which allow creators to specify what they will allow others to do with their outputs and at the same time allow potential users to use and adapt the content without seeking express permission, making it easier for everybody to share and build upon existing knowledge. You've probably come across a Creative Commons license at some point, even if you're not 100% sure what the symbols mean. Each of the main licenses is made up of a combination of the four core elements seen here on the screen. Each license must include the attribution element to acknowledge the creator of the work. This is represented by the person symbol. The no derivatives element specifies that no changes can be made to the work, including adaptations or remixes. This is represented by an equal sign and is found in two of the licenses. The non-commercial element is also found in two of the licenses and is represented by a dollar sign. This element means that only the original author is allowed to make money from their creation. If the work includes a share alike element represented by the circular arrow, then any cre new creations made using the original must be shared under the same conditions so that use can't be made more or less restrictive. This element is part of two of the licenses. As you can see, combinations of each of these symbols make up the six core licenses. Depending on which elements are added to a license, it can be very open or more restrictive. This flexibility helps creators to specify exactly what they're comfortable with when it comes to people reusing their work. However, it's important to remember that the underlying principle of these open licenses is to encourage reuse alongside offering copyright protection for the creators. You may also sometimes come across something which is labelled a CC0 or just a zero symbol as you see on the screen. This allows creators to waive their rights in materials they produced, including the need for attribution. This means that users can reuse, remix and build upon the original work for any reason without restriction. CC0 is sometimes referred to as placing works in the public domain and although the outcome is similar, they're actually two different processes. Works usually enter the public domain when their traditional copyrights expire, whereas CC0 works are immediately available to all and don't require any attribution. Although we're talking about CC0 in relation to Creative Commons licenses, it's not in fact one of the six core licenses and offers a separate no rights reserved policy in contrast to the licenses which all require attribution as standard. So how do you actually use the Creative Commons licenses? Adding a Creative Commons license to your work is a simple process. A selector tool is available online, which will ask you a few questions about what you want people to be able to do with your work and produce the correct license for you at the end. Once you know which license you want to use, you can add a statement and or a graphic to your work to let potential users know which permissions you're granting. The best way to format this statement is to say, this work is licensed under a Creative Commons license type and version number by name of creator. The most recent version of the licenses at the time of recording is version four. It's important to record which version you're using as each has subtle differences. The final step in licensing the work is less formal, but still vital to consider. Think about how open the output you're attaching a license to really is and whether people will actually be able to use it in the way you specify. 
For example, not everyone has access to products like Microsoft Word. So if you're sharing your output in this proprietary format, are you actually putting up a barrier to its use? Think about alternative, universally accessible or open formats instead when sharing your work. It's important not to let the simplicity of adding a Creative Commons license fool you into thinking they're meaningless. They are legally enforceable licenses and several cases have relied on them. If you want to add a Creative Commons or any other type of open license to your work, there are a few things that you should be aware of. Creative Commons licenses can be applied to most formats, but there are a few exceptions, such as software or code, which have their own specific open licenses. It's worth doing a little bit of research to make sure that Creative Commons are really your best option. Check that the work is actually copyrightable and that you have the right to place a license on it. Creative Commons work alongside copyright licenses, so you can only apply them to works that you own the right to. And finally, think about which parts of a work you're actually applying the license to. If you've used large elements of somebody else's work in your own, you are only able to license the parts of the new work that you yourself have created. <laughs>